All right, this is a special edition of the V-Spot. Uh, we are doing our first pre-recorded interview uh, to get around some of the, uh, the time limitations we've had on uh, Blog Talk. I'm talking to professional wrestler Jason Knight. Jason, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. All right, Jason, uh, if we can start, how did you get into professional wrestling? Because I didn't realize you'd been as, around as long as you had been when I was looking for batches of yours. I didn't know that you had been around as long as you were. I didn't realize that you had been wrestling in the WWF and WCW uh, years before you got the ECW. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, uh, I actually started in 1977 over in New York. Uh, I mean, that's when I started training anyway. And, you know, it wasn't until the 80s that I really uh, started wrestling the shows All right. Uh, when did you get to work your first uh, WCW show? I think it was like '88, '87 or '88, and it was in Florida. I think it was somewhere. I'm not sure if it was in the Keys or somewhere in Florida, and uh, I was visiting there. I was in Florida anyway, and I was visiting, and I knew uh, I knew a few of the guys. Uh, Uh, pretty guys that I wrestled with over there, 
when you were uh, working on these shows, or you were at the tapings, how did they decide uh, which wrestlers, uh, the enhancement wrestlers, would get to wrestle on the shows? Uh, when you're doing to, when you're doing the TV tapings, how do they decide the matches as far as who wrestles who when it comes to the enhancement wrestlers like you, like yourself? I think the more experienced, um, and those that they can really trust, you know, get to, uh, wrestle a, either with those that already established superstars and, and need to, uh, have Uh, were when wrestling uh, men like the Steiners or Vader were they as rough as it was it as rough as it looked? Thanks, boy. 
agree with you. Uh, I was watching, you know, because a couple of years ago, I was watching a lot of the old NWA shows going from the 80s on, and there were some really talented guys like Mike Jackson and George South and Gary Royal, and I mean it's... It's, it's definitely, I've seen matches uh, with them, and I actually saw a match with Bob Cook on a TBS show with Dick Murdoch, and it was a hell of a match. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and let me ask you some of the, now you wrestled the Steiners again a couple of years ago in ECW when you were teaming up with the Eliminators. I never went anywhere uh, not being 
Well, let me ask you, since you brought it up, when you came back in uh, 97, uh, you came back in 97, I think you'd been gone about a year, it seemed like the Jason gimmick had changed a bit, it seemed a little rougher than it had been before, was that something you wanted to do? Yeah, well, I was wanting to do that, in fact, I mean, you know, we were always talking about, you know, dropping the whole manager thing, and, uh, um, you know, me just going on my own and, you know, doing something different, you know, but it, uh, it never materialized, and, you know, and that's why I was getting very frustrated, you know, especially toward the end, and you should have been very, very frustrated and very unhappy with the company, and, uh, you know, uh, the whole thing, you know, it just wasn't. It just wasn't, it changed, like, overnight. You know, for a few years there, it was like, you know, a type of environment, you know, and then all of a sudden, it's like, you know, people change. You know, guys that you met when you first went in there, it's like, excuse me, you know, are you, like, wearing this guy's skin, but, like, another personality, or, like, an asshole or something, you yeah. know? I mean... So many just changed, in, you know, uh, uh, for the worse. And, uh, you know, it's almost like everybody started believing their gimmick and, you know, it became like a, you know, I don't know, not a very good place to go to work, I hate to say it. Uh, when you were, uh, when you came back, you started managing Just Incredible uh, pretty soon, and I, I think you added a lot to his uh, act in a, in a lot of ways. Uh, how was he to get along with, and also just wor- when as a manager? How did you look at working as a manager versus being a wrestler? Well, hey, being a manager, I mean, why? Well, you know, uh, I mean, I, I could do it, but you know, I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to wrestle because I mean, it's ridiculous. You have a manager that's uh, uh, more experienced and in better shape than you know the wrestlers. They're uh, these supposed champions and all that, but no, I mean, with, 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 with just, you know, I, I knew him from ECW, uh, I mean, ECW, WWF, we're both the TV, we're both the TV guys and everything, and, uh, you know, he was, he was only maybe, what, 18 years old when, when I met him in uh, the WWF. I saw him there, I didn't recognize him because he had shaved his head, and, uh, and they put us together in the beginning was fine. You know, in, in the beginning, in fact, a lot of uh, uh, <coughs> matches, him and I. And we did a lot versus uh, Dreamer and uh, So, you know, those, those times were fun. But then again, you know, when we started getting into the whole thing with, uh, with um, the impact players, and then this one came in and that one, I was something like the fifth wheel, you know, so it wasn't like, uh, you know, I mean, you know, we, we, we got along, but, you know, we weren't, uh, um, it, it was basically business, you know, so. No. As a fan, I really, I really do think you added a lot to it. Uh, I don't really. It's like you were the thing that kind of. I feel like you were something that really added together, and when you were gone, it was noticeable. Well, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate you saying that. However, you know, like I said, you know, I think what it should have been. You know, I mean, if you're going to have someone on a payroll that is willing to uh, to work. Might as well take advantage of it, you know. Yeah. And uh, and that's one thing about me it was almost like you know I was, I was a troubleshooter. Whatever came, I mean, I was always prepared, you know. That if they needed, you know, they, if it was pay per view time, and they said, look, you know, we need you this match, you know. I mean, I was ready, you know, and you know, I was always ready for for whatever it is, and that. Um, I don't think that there was really any manager in ECW that had that capability that you know, need to uh, don on your, you know, uh, boots and trunks and get in there and, you know, have, you know, a serious match, you know, a serious match. You know, we're not talking about matches at all, a low round, you know, uh, pull hair and comedy we're talking about, you know, professional wrestling or, you know, uh, if they needed a interview promo, uh, if they needed someone young to be, you know, broken in and kind of, uh, uh, to get them over, you know, I was, uh, I was there for that, too. so, yeah. I, uh, I did enjoy it every time I got a, an opportunity to work with someone and, and, you know, help them get over. Uh, 
uh, if I, if you mind, if you don't mind, I'd like to go back to when you were working in the WWF because there was a match I saw and it actually made a DVD set uh, that uh, between you and Lex Luger on uh, when they were at the Manhattan Center. And during the match, Luger hit you with the bionic forearm, and it looks like you were knocked out cold. Uh, was no. Okay, they were just getting over the elbow. No, no not at all. He was, you know, he was, uh, now, you know, well, what happened was, you know, he missed the first one coming off the ropes. And uh, he was just kind of like, you know, like he was going to nail me with the second one. No, I mean, it was, uh, you know, <coughs> I used to him in there, but, you know, not to knock me out. Yeah, because I mean, it looked like you'd be. I mean, if I had to bet, I always said, I always tell people if you're going to bet on something, if whether you're sure or not, bet your right hand on it. You know, and I tell you, I would have bet my right hand that you'd been knocked out. I saw. I saw where you had a match with Ric Flair in the WWF. How was he to work with? I love Tully Blanchard. He, uh, I think he's one of the best. Yep. Uh, can you tell me how was he? Uh, can you tell me how were Flair and Blanchard uh, the same, and how were they different in working with them? I'm sorry, uh, our connection is kind of. Uh, yeah, I tell you, uh, yeah, this is the first time I've tried this. I experimented a few times with some local calls on recording. And they went well, but you're like the, you're the first person I'm experimenting with on long distance. Yeah. Uh, what I was saying was, is how were Flair and Blanchard uh, similar in the ring, and were there things they did that were different? Rick Flair. 
on what happened to like Terry or get hurt or break an ankle. What, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I always had that in mind. You know, don't hesitate to pin me. Uh, you know, if, if, if I can't go on, that type of a thing. So it was always, uh, you always had that in the back of the mind, but you, know, you, didn't, you didn't go out there and, you know, uh, and call anything. In fact, you know, with Mike Rotundo, when I got to wrestle him for the first time, I did not even see him in the arena. I didn't know where he was. Such a huge building, you know. And uh, I only got to meet him when we were both waiting um, uh, right there behind the curtains to uh, walk out. And, you know, I introduced myself to who I was. And you know, I did the same. I said, Well, we're working tonight. Said, yes, I know. And I asked him if he's there anything he wanted to do. He said, No, I'll call it in the ring. I didn't even know what the finish was. Until I got into the ring, the referee said, the finishes will be the airplane spin. And I thanked him, and you know, that was it. And those are the kind of matches that I like to work because you know, I know a lot of, uh, a lot of wrestlers that get nervous if you don't want to talk over a match. They think, you know, what is this guy, you know, just some, you know, uh, you know, uh, he's an ass or, you know, why is he mean like that? It's not really, I mean, you know, you never really know how the fans are going to react. And that's what you, know, you, need to, uh, you need to work for the crowd, you know, not for yourselves. You know, that's uh, what a lot of uh, the wrestlers out there need to learn. That, you know, you're not out there for you, you're out there for them. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a true professional, you know, and uh, I mean, if you're going to be a mark for yourself, then, you know, just build your own ring and, and invite a crowd with a beer keg. Yeah. You know, jump around all you want. Yeah, it's kind of like... Work, you know, in, in, in the real life and in the real world of professional wrestling, you know, sports entertainment, it doesn't work that way because, you know, they come first. So, yeah, so... And, it's like, you know, it's like basically, you know, you go out there, you're supposed to entertain the fans, you know, you ain't supposed to be masturbating. Well, yeah, that's the last thing you want to do. Yeah, you know, you're not pleasuring yourself. Uh, let, me ask, uh, let me ask you this about, since you worked in both WWF and uh, WCW, how were the WWF tapings different than the WCW tapings? Uh, um, the WWF was a lot more pretentious and, and you know, a lot more like this. Yeah. 
out. <coughs> Someone could do an interview. You know, that, okay, you know, <laughs> it's almost like how fake it is. <laughs> oh, okay, cut. You know, uh, let's go back. Let's, you know, let's do a match. You know, and then, then that same guy comes out and kind of saying, oh, okay, not good enough. <laughs> let's go back. So, like three or four times in the night, they're the same. You know, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is like really, uh, like very, very staged. All right, uh, if you mind, I want to go to go forward a little bit. 1997 uh, at the Queen, uh, the night at Queens when Justin Incredible took on the Great Sasuke, and it was a big deal because Justin pinned him. Was was there any type of flack from Sasuke about putting over Justin? I don't think so. I mean, I, I didn't really, you know. I mean, my thing was there just to. Uh, I don't think so. I didn't, I, I didn't see anything that really. Uh, uh, you know, I respect everyone, and uh, I don't think that uh, Sasuke is um, uh, anything or any more important than, you know, uh, credible, especially in his own, you know, backyard. Right. The same for them, you know, when we, uh, when we go to Japan, it really doesn't matter. You know, sometimes, it's even, you know, when I went to Japan, I mean, all the guys I never heard of before, but, you know, it's their own homeland, it really doesn't matter. I got to you come in, you do what you do, and, you know, it was PJ's, uh, you know, credible time to shine. Yeah. Basically, you know, she deserved it, so why not? And, you know, you're you're somewhere where, you know, especially a, a crowd like, you know, Queens, New York, and uh, pretty much around the corner from where I live. And, you know, this was a crowd that wanted to see, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the bad guy win, and, you know, because that's especially, you know, the up and coming. Yeah, I was at, yeah, I didn't notice anything, but at the time it was just such a huge upset, you know, that it say that you almost wonder, you know, uh, I mean, because it really, I remember watching on TV. You were talking about working in Japan, and I was curious about it. Uh, is it difficult to adjust over there to working guys that don't speak your language, or do they have a ba basic grasp of English? Mike Awesome was one of, one of the greatest wrestlers ever. I mean, he had the complete look, 
One thing I noticed, you know, just because you were talking about how sometimes, you know, you might you could overplan something when you're planning stuff out. When I first started doing interviews with wrestlers, you know, a couple of years ago, I wrote down all these questions. And I got so obsessed on staying on the list that I w that it didn't allow the conversation to move along right. Yeah, it's like having a few ideals of where you want to go. That way you could have a con like I'm talking to you, you know, and I've really enjoyed where the conversation's moved. Wrestling is all about you know, when you hit someone with a, you know, with a clothesline and then you, you know, and 
One thing I was meaning to ask you about is going back to uh, 1994. Do you uh, do you remember when you won the ECW TV title? Yeah. Was was that a big deal for you at the time? Yeah, yeah. It was, well, I mean, you know, it's a big deal uh, because you know I, I think anytime uh, when it comes to a company that is being followed and taken seriously and when you know, the booking committee, uh, the higher ups, decide to, uh, to have you represent the company, you know, for whatever time it may be, um, a week or two, a month, and I don't know, I think in my case it was, it was like uh, 10 weeks or something like that. You know, it's, um, it, it, it's a big deal only because they, they trust you that for that time, the man to, uh, to do the job. You know, it's not about you know putting on a belt and wearing it. It's you know the pride and the honor that they trust you enough that uh, uh, you know you're the one that's uh, going to represent the company for, for that time. You know on television as you know the supposed world champion and, and all that. So you know, it was uh, you know, it was uh, it was a great honor for me uh, because because I look at it from I mean I look at it from this. Uh, business point of view that they, you know, here, you know, here is uh, some guys like Paul Heyman and um, Doc Gordon and, you know, they're investing their time and money into this and effort and all that, so uh, they trust me enough to, you know, to have me run with this and, uh, you know, that, that's a pretty cool feeling, you know, and, uh, you know, you're always hoping that that will get you uh, further up the line and everything, uh, and uh, that you'll kind of grow with that and uh, do better and make more money and, you know, get better spots and get better matches. And, and so, you know, you're always kind of hopeful when it comes to that. How was, uh, now, I think, didn't you wrestle Two Cold Scorpio a couple of times during this period? Didn't you wrestle Too Cold Scorpio during this period? Only once, and uh, and you know that was uh, that was when I dropped the belt. And the way that that match was designed by Paul, neither Scorpio or I liked it. You know, we were both very much against it. You know, because uh, you know he he just had Scorpio come in and just kind of you know uh, attack me and, and destroy me with no no offense. You know, and you know, I, you know, I, I, I thought it was absolutely ridiculous, but I, I said nothing. I said, okay, you know, whatever you say. You know, Scorpio was absolutely against it. He said that was, that's downright stupid because it should be the other way around. You know, that I mean, you know, he rolls into the ring, and I'm, you know, uh, and I keep and I keep trying to pin him, and he keeps, you know, I think it would have been you know, much more excitement. Then, but you know, Paul was just so dumb. Oh no, I don't want it like that. You know, so Scorpio and I decided that he attacked me from behind. You know, in order to make it look a little more, you know, uh, legitimate. You know, uh, because you know, it was, you know, it was just, uh, you know, I, I think that that has to go booking when it came. Uh, you know, Paul was uh, a mistake, and he makes very, very few mistakes when it comes to booking. And, very smart uh, when it comes to a business, but for some reason, I mean, you know, that was like, you know, that was like him trying to get back to me, you know, for something, I don't know, uh, it's like, you know, that must have been it, because, um, uh, it, it's, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I mean, in fact, you know, Hulk and I could have had such a wonderful match, you know, but, you know, Paul's thing was, you know, he, he always knew, you know, my ability, and, my training and all that, but he wanted to keep the character so, um, uh, almost like incapable, you know, like 
All right. Uh, I was going to ask you something. I noticed on your Facebook page where you always you always tell a bunch of really good stories from your time in wrestling. You mentioned in WCW in 1990 that you were almost given a that you almost were given a push that by Ole Anderson. Well, you know, I mean, uh, that's not exactly those words. Uh, yeah, not like that. I'm sorry. This is what, you know, this is what happened. I mean, I was going back and forth, and then, you know, we were talking about something. And, you know, I mean, I obviously had no problem doing TV. And he told me uh, that uh, he saw all my photographs, my pictures, like eight by ten that I had. I know you had like blonde hair and stuff like that, almost kind of looked like snake, you know. And he said, you know, can you, why don't you, can you come back like that? Because I uh, like to put you in almost like, not obviously not, you know, uh, thing, but I think it was like that, uh, he booked that match with Flair, uh, was there, like, uh, cooks and me and Sting and comes in to help and the whole thing. And so, uh, Uh, Jason, uh, I'm about to run out of time on my uh, recorder. Uh, what do you have? What are you working on right now? Or, or, I mean, what promotions are you working for? Uh, one more time, please. Uh, what promotions are you working for at the moment? It's a really, it's a good company to work for. 
Yeah, that's a very good thing. Jason, uh, we're almost out of time. Uh, thank you for talking to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Not a problem. Anytime. All right, man. You have a good day. Bye.